we have seen bands come and go. While some have had peaceful breakups, others have been more abrupt and have led to feuds and a lot more occurring. Today on Music Rewind, we're going to talk about the rise and demise of the Smiths. The Smiths were a Manchester-based rock band formed in 1982. It was founded by members Johnny Marr and Morrissey. They became good friends after meeting at a Patti Smith gig in 1978. After finding a lot of common ground with a love of poetry, literature and music, they formed what we now know as The Smiths. They had a few members come and go, but the main two that stuck around were drummer Mike Jones and bassist Andy Rock. They recorded their first demo in October of 1982 and played it for Factory Records, who turned them down. They recorded their second demo in December 1982 and played it for EMI, and they also turned them down. The band would continue to write music and perform, and in 1983, they got their big break after meeting an independent record label, Rough Trade Records, who agreed to release their song, Hand in Glove, which was released in May of 1983. The song sold well despite never charting on the UK Top 40. Things further improved when they had a gig in London and they were asked to perform at Radio 1's live sessions, which gave them enough exposure to get their first interviews with Enemy and Sounds. All their efforts had paid off and the band officially signed a record deal with Rough Trade Records, although Morrissey and Johnny Marr signed the contract on behalf of the other two members without any discussion. The label brought in Troy Tate, who as part of the band The Teardrop Explodes, to help the band produce an album. However, the label hated what they had done and got rid of Troy and brought in John Potter. The band then released their second single, The Charming Man, in October of 1983, which received a warm reception by critics and audiences, enough to make it their first UK Top 40. And in 2019, this song was certified platinum. In January 1984, they would release their first ever Top 20 single, What Difference Will It Make? Due to the newfound success and exposure, they started to develop a fan base. In 1984, the band would release their self-titled debut album, which peaked at number two on the UK Albums chart. A few songs on that album were met with controversy as tabloid newspapers alleged the songs like Reel Around the Fountain and The Hand That Rocks the Cradle were suggestive of pedophilia. The band denounced such claims. They continued to release singles including their first ever top 10, Heaven Knows I'm Miserable, which is listed on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 Songs That Shaped Rock and Roll. That song is also featured on their compilation album released in November of 1984, Hatful of Hollow. However, more controversy followed them again after they were accused of glorifying the murders of the more murderers on the song Suffer Little Children. The grandfather of one of the victims was offended by the band commercializing on the death of his grandchild. However, the situation was resolved when Morrissey would meet the grandfather and he accepted that the song was a sincere exploration of the impact of the murders. In February of 1985, they released their second album, Meet His Murder, which was a lot more political but it still managed to hit number one on the UK albums chart and even cross over to the States, landing at number 110. They caused a lot of controversy speaking out about major political issues such as Margaret Thatcher's government and the British monarchy. The album was highly praised for its musical diversity and is ranked on the Rolling Stones list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. The band were just getting bigger and bigger as they started to tour and it didn't stop. However, we do start to see a few cracks here. They released their third album, The Queen Is Dead, which is hailed as one of the best albums of all time, even scoring a near-perfect score of 99 on Metacritic. While the album was successful reaching gold and platinum status in the US and UK, there were troubles within the band. There were legal disputes with the labels that caused them to delay the album, and Johnny Marr was feeling the pressure of a tiresome schedule of recording and performing that he said it was making him extremely ill. Andy Rock was fired from the band due to his heroin addiction. According to him, he found out by a post-it note that read, Andy, you have left the Smiths, goodbye and good luck, Morrissey. Although Morrissey denies this. They brought in a new member to replace him, Craig Gannon. However, Andy was brought back two weeks later and Gannon switched to playing rhythm guitar and the Smiths were now a five-piece. 1987 was a significant year for the band. They left Rock Trade Records and signed with major label EMI, which, if we remember, turned them down five years prior. And this move was criticised by both fans and the press. They would release their second compilation album, The World Won't Listen, which was suggested by Morrissey to voice his frustration that they weren't achieving mainstream success. However, 
They would score their second top 10 single, with Sheila Take a Bow. They later released another compilation album, Louder Than Bombs, for overseas audiences who didn't have the material of their past work. In September 1987, they would deliver their last album, Strange Ways, Here We Come. It was different from their other releases because everyone wanted a different sound. Tensions were high within the band, Johnny Marr was exhausted which led him to take a break from the band and would later leave the group after he believed an article by Enemy Smith's to split was planted by Morrissey. The article stated that the two musicians relationship was at a breaking point, however Marr told Enemy that he left the band because he wanted a wider musical scope. The band replaced Ma with Iva Perry, however, that wouldn't last long and Perry was uncomfortable with the situation and like they wanted another Johnny Ma and no music was ever completed with him. All this was happening months before the release of their final record, and by the time of its release, the Smiths had completely split up. The main reasons were due to Ma and Morrissey no longer getting along due to doing completely different things. Morrissey hated that Ma was working with other artists and Ma hated that Morrissey wanted to sing 60s pop songs. So that was the end of The Smiths. They lasted 5 years, but that's not where our story ends. It gets a lot worse. If you remember, at the beginning we said Morrissey and Ma signed the record deal without discussing it with the other two members. Well, that caused a bit of an issue because one thing that got screwed over was by the royalties. While Morrissey and Ma took 40% each of the Smiths recording and performance royalties, Joyce and Rock only got 10% each. In March of 1989, both members sued their former bandmates over this, arguing that they were equal partners in the Smiths and each entitled to 25% of the shares of the band's profits. Rock was in debt during this time so quickly settled for £83,000 and 10% royalties and dropped everything. However, Joyce continued to fight and in 1996, the case reached the High Court of Justice. Morrissey and Ma accepted that Joyce was an equal member but weren't sure if he really deserved a quarter share. Joyce claims he wasn't even aware he was only entitled to 10% until after the band split but Morrissey and Ma claimed that both members were told about their cuts. Joyce won his case and was awarded £1 million back in royalties and 25% going forward. Morrissey believed he was judged because he went on to have a successful solo career and claimed the band was a beautiful thing and Johnny left it and Mike destroyed it. He would later appeal the ruling but he was dismissed. Rock was inspired by Joyce and also went to see what his options were but he was declared bankrupt in 1999. There were more back and forths with the situation with Morrissey saying in 2005 that Joyce cost him at least £1.5 million in recovery royalties and legal fees. Morrissey would go on to have quite a successful solo career with 3 number 1 and 15 UK top 10 albums and Johnny Marr would have 3 top 10s but would produce and write for acts such as The Pet Shop Boys, Tom Jones, Talking Heads, Beck and now even Billie Eilish. The other two would go on to do their own things, playing with other bands. But how were things after the lawsuit fiasco? Well, in 2006, when asked if there would be a reunion of some sorts, Morrissey seemed quite positive and said, I would rather eat my own testicles than reform the Smiths. And that's saying something for a vegetarian. That same year, in another interview, he said, We're not friends, we do not see each other. Why on earth would we be on stage together? All the members have stated that they have no desire to reform the group. Now, this year, 2022, will be the Smiths' 40 year anniversary. And you might be thinking that maybe after some time, there might be something. Well, what happened this year may just crush that hope. Earlier in January, Ma did an interview and said, I'm really close with everyone I've worked with except from the one obvious. Not much of a surprise because we're so different, me and Morrissey. He continues saying, the only thing that turned to shit was the Smiths. I hate talking about the group I formed in those terms, the group I love, but let's get some perspective. Not long after that interview was released, Morrissey published an open letter to Ma telling him to stop mentioning him while promoting his new music. He said, would you please discuss your own career, your own unstoppable solo achievements and your own music? Would you please just leave me out of it? Also stating that they haven't known each other for 35 years. 
and basically just leave the situation alone and stop mentioning him all the time. Ma responded on Twitter saying, Dear Moz, an open letter hasn't really been a thing since 1953. It's all social media now. Even Donald J. Trump had that one down. Also, this fake news business, a bit 2021, yeah? Hashtag making indie great again. So after that, who knows what will happen. And for now, that is the rise and demise of the Smiths. Well, wasn't that a roller coaster? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Hope to see you in the next video coming to a YouTube near you real soon. Maybe, I hope. Definitely this time, sometime this year, but yeah, thank you for watching.